I know this is an equivalent of the bottom pot, it still feels more satisfying for some reason. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. And in my hands I've got Son of POW, a smart switch that also measures power. And I talked about uh, uh, off-the-box functionality in my previous video, it should be linked somewhere there. Uh, but today we're gonna flash it with Tasmota. And why am I flashing it with Tasmota? Because unless you're gonna flash it with something, that information about uh, uh, power consumption and obviously control is available through the EVLink app. Thanks to the Smota, you can access this information or control the device via HTTP requests or MQTT, and that's what I need for my upcoming projects. So, before I tell you about the projects with this thing, we're gonna open it up, make hardware modification that only takes about five minutes, and flash it with Tasmota and uh, go through the setting up process. Later on this video, I'm gonna show you how to interact with this using Node-RED. It's time to pry the enclosure, open and unscrew all four screws holding the PCB to its case. Now, I opted out for female headers. If you prefer male headers, well, that's your thing. Uh, cut them to size, it's six different headers, so six by one, and then uh, sort them through and bend a couple of pins just to secure it in place before you start soldering. The soldering job takes honestly less than five minutes, uh, with ironing and heating up as well. So in no time you'll be ready to actually flash your software. To flash firmware, I've used FTD1232 a programmer, so that's a serial adapter, and you have to connect it with uh, wires. Basically connect three volts, ground, and then TX to RX and RX to TX. And that's it, the GPIO zero is the button itself, and that's what we're gonna be using. It's super simple. If you did a good job after connecting power to the programmer, you should see the sun of flashing blue again. That means it's alive! So connect your sun off to your computer while pressing down the bo button to put it in a flash mode. You should see it popping up in your ports. In my case, it's a COM5, so make note on that. Now, I've talked about ASP tool and setting the entire environment in my previous post that I've gonna link in the description, and I'll describe how to set up the environment on Windows, how to make everything ready so you could start using ESP tool, and also explain how to backup, erase, and restore the firmware. So uh, check this out if you want to learn how to do it. Now, once you've got that connected, all you have to do is uh, shift down, right click, and you'll see open PowerShell windows here. And then we're gonna need a command. Before that, uh, we also need to download the latest Tasmota firmware. So go to this page, I'm gonna link it in the description, scroll to the very bottom, and you'll see Son of Bin. That works for every single um, son of device, so you'll be able to configure yours. If you want uh, yours to be in a different language, just click uh, the language groups in here. Put the bin into a main ESP tool folder because that's how we're gonna find it, and use the command. I prepare my command first, erase the flash. It's gonna take only a couple of moments. Now, once this is erased, you have to disconnect it from power again. Press the button down while powering uh, the ES, uh, the son of device. You have to put it back in the flash mode. And then we are ready to flash uh, the firmware. So the firmware, just make sure it uh, contains the name of the firmware itself and just paste the comment, make sure the COM port is correct and you can flash it. It's gonna take a couple of moments. And once this is flashed, you'll be able to go to the configuration page. Once you've connected the son of again to the power, go to your network settings to discover uh, waiting um, Wi-Fi networks. As you can see, I've got a son of in here, I can connect to it automatically. The default IP address is 8, 4, and 1. And enter your details for uh, your Wi-Fi password. When you connect the son of to your 
uh, internet, the first thing that you're supposed to do is go to configuration and configure your model. You can either select a POW or two if that's the model of your device, or if you have an older one, it's just some of POW. Once you've changed that configuration, when you uh, save it, it will restart uh, the sun of for you and uh, all the buttons and uh, LEDs going to be mapped correctly. There's a couple of more things to configure. First of all, you're going to be asked to configure MQTT. So enter your uh, host port and username and password. I usually uh, swap the topic and prefix around because I prefer to see it this way. You don't have to. You can also specify your topic uh, name which i did to uh, use the name of the device now that bit doesn't really matter because we're going to be accessing this uh, mqtt uh, topics from console itself i'll show you in a second now once this is done another thing you can do is configure logging this is how often mqtt will be responding back with the data about the energy use default is 300 seconds so five minutes if you want that a little bit more often just change this value Lastly, if you're going to use the HTTP, I would strongly recommend you to change the password. So this is a web admin password. The username is admin and password is whatever you're going to set it. It's going to secure your HTTP and endpoints and I would strongly recommend you to set the password. Now, once you've configured your device, uh, then we can simply jump into the node red and see how the node red works. Uh, Obtaining information or directing the device itself is very simple. There's only a couple of things that you have to do. First of all, I've, mes uh, I've mentioned that we're going to use the topics. And the topics, you don't have to figure out how to configure them. You can just answer, uh, access the console from the main menu. So if you go to main menu, click on console, it will give you a list of topics available right now for your device plus you can back yourself up with that list in here from if you just type in son of uh, commands you'll get this website and that'll give you all the commands possible now looking at here if i for example want information about the status of my sonos i'm using this topic and it'll return the power on so let's test it so i've used this topic in here when i switch the power it will return this message. Everything works correctly. Same with the uh, energy source. Uh, if I want to get the energy information, I'm using this topic and this topic is taken from uh, the list on here. So you can see this is the sensor and that's the information that will be available every 300 seconds. Now, lastly, if you want to control the relay itself, there's a name for your device and then command and power one, which uh, directs the first relay. If you have multiple relays, power two, three, etc. Now to control the on and off, you just pass the true or false values. Let's take a look at the HTTP requests. I've mentioned you're supposed to be securing them with a password and username, and I, I push my password and username via inject node. The HTTP is formatted in such way that first we've got IP, uh, then we're asking for username and password, then there is a command and the value of this command. So in this case, my command is power and the value is toggle, which means I'll be toggling the device. Let's try this. As you can see, I've toggled and the response is JSON uh, power on. Well, I've converted it to JSON, but that's that's the flow. Now, if you want to receive the information about power, uh, th in this case, my command is status, and looking up the reference table in here, looks that the status eight with the value eight gives me the information about the power. So let's try this too. As you can see, this is the response from uh, the son of, and that's the current power use that you can see in here. Those are the details. I'm super happy I get to use this box with a uh, node red, mostly because it's going to help me out a lot in my next projects. I've got two upcoming projects. Uh, project one, I'm going to attach this to my 3D printer, which will basically turn it on and off when required and monitor the power use of a 3D printer so I could add the estimated cost of electricity to a completed print. The second project, it will involve my washing machine because I'm a forgetful person and in the past I've left my washing in the washing machine for several days. Yeah, really. 
so I really hope that's gonna prevent me from doing it again. If you're excited about any of the projects, uh, well, just follow me on social media or subscribe to this channel and you'll get a notification as soon as it's posted. Thanks for watching so uh, much for now and as usual, I'll see you in the next video.